You're listening to Parenting Our Future with certified parent coach, Robin McMahon, author of The Yelling Cure and founder of Parenting for Connection. My podcast is all about providing you with the tools and solutions you need in your parenting so you can create the family you always wanted. Hi parents, it's Robin McMahon here. Just before you dive into this episode, I want to invite you to join my new membership site for free. My site, which is at www.parent-toolbox.com, is the companion to my award-winning podcast where you will find game-changing tools and resources from me and from my expert guests who are among the top leaders in the parenting world. Join for free today at www.parent-toolbox.com. Now back to the show. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Parenting Our Future. Today we're talking about cooking. We're talking about cooking with your kids and how we can create a stronger bond with our kids in the kitchen. I am so excited for you to hear from my special guest, Meryl Hunt, who's the owner of Connecting Kitchen. Love that name. She's an entrepreneur, certified health coach, world traveler, self-taught chef, wife, and mom of three adult kids. The Connecting Kitchen is all about helping people build healthier bodies and stronger relationships. She says that if you want to build better relationships with someone, try cooking with them. I love it. Welcome. Welcome, Meryl. Thank you for being here. Yeah. Hey, Robin. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. I love your podcast and I love your parenting style um, and I've learned a lot from you. Oh, thank you so much. That's so nice of you to say. And I'm just thrilled to talk to you. And I got to be honest... Meryl, maybe you can help me because I don't love cooking. I don't. I honestly do not love cooking. And I, I often dread dinner. I do. It's true. I dread dinner because it's the last meal of the day. And I just like, oh, so I'm listening intently to everything that you say so that I can make some changes. I just want you to know that you are an inspiration to me this very minute as we talk right now. (laughs) Oh, good. Oh, that's great. Yes. And I am actually here to change people's mindsets around cooking so that they can embrace it as the opportunity that it is to nourish and connect, right? We're moms. We start nourishing our kids when they're babies, when they're toddlers. Mm. Um, Our kids need us most when they're teens, right? When we're ready to say, okay, you can do it now. But we really need to keep that connection going. So keep that in mind as part of the opportunity. Yeah. Um, Well, and I think, you know, you, so you have adult children, your, your kids are 26 through to 21. You've got a couple of boys and a girl and, um, and you cooked with all of them. Um, yes, uh, I wish I had started with my oldest one a little bit sooner. Um, I cooked with my daughter from the time she was born, basically, because she wouldn't let me put her down. So she was kind of strapped to me right. um, snugly while I was making dinner or unloading the dishwasher or whatever. So there was that connection. Um, she was just generally more interested in cooking. So she was always there helping me out. Uh, we we're very close today. My younger mm-hmm. son used to always watch me cook. I used to say, come on, help me. He was like, no, I think he was a little bit of that perfectionist type mm. of personality. Didn't really want to try it until he really understood it. Yeah. But when he went off to college, it's like he just needed very little help because he had watched mm. and absorbed. So that was his learning style. Right. And then there is my oldest son, who is the inspiration behind the Connecting Kitchen. Um, we had a very, very, very difficult relationship. For those of you who have challenging children, you know what I'm talking about. If I had just had my other two children, I would have been patting myself on the back thinking, I got this, you know, this is a piece of cake. What are all those other moms worried about? What are they talking about? Um, my oldest child is just very willful. Um, his little special needs. So learning is a challenge. He grew up with some physical challenges, need a lot of different kinds of therapy, um, things like that, had strong opinions about things, made choices that I didn't necessarily agree with. Every conversation that we had was an argument. I mean, yeah. we could not have a conversation for even a couple minutes that didn't turn into something um, that was shouting, Um, and angry and awful. Um, So it was deeply painful, as you can imagine. 
I can. I know. I know what that's like. It's hard. And so you're feeling the disconnection, which is painful. You know, when we're not connected with our kids, it hurts, right? Yes. Yeah. It hurts. We feel bad. We worry about it. Yeah. Uh, we don't sleep at night. Right. It's true. No. So, so how did you connect with him? How did you even broach the subject? If, if it was hard to even be around him, I can imagine there was probably part of you that didn't even want to be near him. Yeah. So a lot of the time, you know, it's just easier not to be near him, but then there's that sort of inner drive as a mom, you know, you want your kids to be happy. You want them to succeed. They're living in your house. So you yeah, can't really avoid them. Yeah. Yeah. And they're interacting with the other people. So you want, you just want peace mm -hmm. in your home, right? Yeah. You want to make a good home. You want everybody to be happy, to be connected and to be at peace and feel joy. That's exactly it. That's the dream, right? Yeah. That's yeah. Great. So, yeah. So I was trying to figure out everything. I bought parenting books. I wish you were around when my kids were a little bit younger. I could have learned a lot, um, a lot of useful tools. Um, and I just wanted to get him on a right path and build some kind of relationship. And it was just by coincidence that we ended up cooking together. It was That's totally nice. a fluke. He was already 19. I wish I had figured out. I was going to ask you. Yeah. Yeah, he was 19 and um, he needed a job. He wasn't in a position to get a job. You know, most kids can go out and get a job at that point in their lives. He wasn't ready for that um, for a lot of different reasons. That's a conversation for another day. So mm -hmm. I hired him to do some chores around the house. And mm -hmm. when the garage was swept and the weeds were pulled and I was like, well, you know, I got to make dinner. So you're you're going to help me. We're going to go to the store. We're going to go shopping and you're going to help me make the meal. Wow. And yeah, so here so, we are. Yeah. So I had no idea when we first started cooking together, aside from, you know, all the lessons you can learn just from shopping and budgeting and choosing food yeah. and nutrition and all of that, that I just sort of took for granted as a parent mm. and a mom, um, you know, were lessons that he needed to learn that our kids need to learn, that we forget that we need to teach this, yeah. right? If we want our well, kids to eat well. Yeah, I, I think there's so much about what you're saying that is, is important. So, you know, for one, uh, you know, all math and fractions and, you know, there's and budgeting, you know, there's some real world lessons in, 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 in the, in the act of cooking and shopping and preparing and all of that. Right. So, um, so I see that as being really powerful, but also, um, you know, just watching the creation of the dish, the different tastes, the different textures, all of that stuff. And, and I think too, um, you know, you say something, um, that it's, it's also about the way we feel about food, right. The way we are, we're teaching our kids to feel about food and, um, you know, when you do drive through or quick meals or, you know, what have you, um, it shows that maybe mealtime is a low priority. Maybe it's just like, just put this in your face and, and, and go on with your day. Right. Kind of. Yes. And, and some of the huge lessons that I actually learned in the kitchen from him, um, we were talking about how difficult um, before we started, we were talking about how difficult children could be our biggest teachers you know, when I got in the kitchen, I realized that this was more about teamwork. It was more about cooperation. It was more about respect and communication, which were mm -hmm. the biggies that we were missing. We could never get on the same page. Right. So that was like the big aha moment when we started cooking together and there was peace. Now it didn't happen overnight. We've been cooking every week together for seven years or something and we keep building on our relationship we still have different ideas about a lot of things mm -hmm. but at least now we have the communication skills so we can have a conversation right and you're and you're coming together over something neutral right over something good that we can all agree is good we all enjoy food we all enjoy you know the the act of you know of, of having a meal together. Right. I mean, that's why we say like, let's go for lunch, let's go for dinner. You know, like it's, it's, you know, it's, it's social, it's nourishing. It's all of those things. Yeah. And you don't want to um, underestimate the connection 
of a mom feeding her child and what that means to that child in terms of nourishing. Uh, Mm -hmm. I always call it love on a plate. When you make the meal and you spend the time and the energy, not that it has to be a ton of time, right? Mm -hmm. That's another thing that I do is I help moms kind of integrate cooking and embrace the opportunity, but fit it into their busy working lifestyle, right? Because most moms are working now. Well, I think that's the key, right? That's that's the key is we are um, decision worn by the time by the time it comes to dinner time. You know, we've made so many decisions that it's like it's it's hard to 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 make another one at dinner time. So, what are your you know how do we get around that? What do, what do you advise for people like me? <laughs> yeah. Well, first of all, share the burden. Why are you trying to do it all by yourself? Right, so we don't realize that when our kids are young, we're teaching them. Mm -hmm. But even little kids can do a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, they can sort beans, they can mix, they can chop, they can shred things with their hands. Mm -hmm. I mean, they can be useful, get them involved. These things are fun for them. Yeah. They haven't been doing it for 10, 20 years and run out of ideas, right? So that's huge. And then as you bring them along in the process, you don't have to come up with all the ideas for dinner. Ask Mm -hmm. them what they want to make. Let them go pick the recipe. Kids can get on the internet. You know how many recipes are out on the internet? Um, And then bring it back (laughs) and you're making it together. By the time they're a teen, they can make you dinner. Wait a second. (laughs) I've missed the opportunity. I missed it. Oh my gosh. Um, But yeah, I hear you. And, and in all truth, we do share the burden. Um, You know, it's not just me. It's not all on me. Uh, And I love it when my, my youngest son will just make himself eggs. He just loves make loves making scrambled eggs. So that's, that's his, his go-to. But I think, I think it's a call. It's a call for me to awareness too. And this is not just about me, but you know, like, okay, how can we invite them in? I think as parents, we're often perfectionists ourselves. And so it's hard to tolerate a, a teaching space and things not being exactly how you want them to be. Right. Um, And so we've got to kind of lighten up a little bit, I think, too. Right. Like, how did you deal with that? Because I'm sure your your son, when he first was there cooking with you, it wasn't exactly how you would have popped the the carrots or done things in a certain way. Right. Yeah. Well, I think when you have a difficult relationship with anybody, you're going to learn some things. Right. And patience was big on my list of things that I needed to learn. And it was on his as well. You know, I mentioned he was a little um, special and and challenged Mm. in some different ways that typical kids aren't. So I needed to learn how to relate to him and vice versa. That's what we were trying to figure out. So being perfect at the mealtime, I realized right away, isn't really what we're here for. It's to connect. It's to nourish. It's to let him know that we're on the same side, Mm -hmm. that I'm here for him. And cooking is a creative process. So when you have people with different brains or different thought styles or whatever, this is a great opportunity to let them express themselves, Mm. right? And everyone's body is different. So as the certified health coach that I am, um, our bodies are these incredible computers. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Think about what your body does. You have billions of cells and there are different chemical, electrical reactions, billions of those happening every second. The fuel you put in is so important and everybody's body is unique. So give them the chance to tell you what fuel their body needs. I think this becomes every mother's nightmare, right? The kids are at the table, you put the dinner down and they're like, oh, I'm not eating that. Yeah, it's happened to every one of us, every single one of us, yes. (laughs) Every single night. Yeah, right. well, most nights, yeah. Or you're making three or four meals <laughs> to make right. everybody happy, right? Which I swear I would never do. And I've done, I've done it, I've done it. So part of that is kids need different things, mm-hmm. right? I'm sure both your boys are not the same and they have different Definitely. needs. Yeah. Right, so this gave him a chance, one, as a teenager, what are they looking for? Control, independence. They want to express themselves. 
I mean, when I'm talking about connecting in the kitchen, I think you can see it's not obvious all these hidden benefits. Right. So as we're bringing them to light, the light bulb goes off for most moms. They're mm-hmm. like, wow, this is an opportunity to really connect and relate to my child mm. and to build a very different kind of relationship. Yes, you might have to plan an extra half hour. I mean, I'm expert at quick meals, um, making the five meals in one so you can handle gluten-free, dairy-free, vegetarian, pescatarian, you know, everybody all sitting at the same table. Awesome, okay. Yeah, I mean, we talked about I do a Sunday night cooking class. Yeah, we're gonna talk about that because that is exciting, yeah. Yeah, it's all substitutions and accommodations, but you're still making the same meal, so it doesn't feel like you're making five different meals, so that's kind of cool too. Well, yeah, and, and in full disclosure, I am the world's pickiest eater, so that is part of why, you know, why I struggle. Again, this isn't about me. I just feel like I need to, I need to, I need help in this area, <laughs> but you know anyway. It is it. about you. It's about you and it's about everyone. Yeah, yeah. And that's, it resonates with everyone. That's what's really neat about it. Well, and don't you think that at a certain age, there is a sense of panic we feel because we know our kids only have so much time before they're going to be going out on their own, whether it's to college or they're going to live on their own or whatever it is. And this is a very important thing that they need to understand how to cook, how to nourish their body, how to eat balanced meals, because I think it would scare most of us to think that our kids were just eating ramen and drive through, you know, wouldn't it? Right. And that's what I mean by the opportunity. You only have so much time and you, you want to feel that connection. Like you kind of said, oh, your kids are almost out the door, but you really want to keep that connection going for the rest of their lives. I have moms that come cook with me on Sunday nights and their 30 something year old sons are showing up for dinner on Sunday. They're like, what are you making? What's Meryl cooking with you? And they're excited and it brings them home and they're eating better. And the moms feel like rock stars in the kitchen instead of failures. I mean, it's beautiful. Well, let me ask you just about you and your son. So, you know, one of the things that I I love about this, this, you know, idea that the the act of cooking together is your side by side, which means if, if you're talking to a teenager, it's less threatening, right? They, you know, when, when we're, we're especially boys forcing them to, you know, look at us eye to eye, we can just be so much more casual and maybe we can slip in some deeper conversations as we go. And so I'm just curious, like, what was it with you and your son? How were you able to connect with him? And what did you learn about him that you wouldn't have known had you not been cooking together? Yeah, so um, I think the biggest lesson was with the empty spaces in between. Like, you know, we're talking about food and preparing the food and what we're doing, but there's lots of times when you're just working side by side, like you said, you're chopping Mm -hmm. or whatever. Maybe he has an idea, I have to give direction, that kind of thing. But in the open spaces, they'll fill in what's on their mind. And -hmm. then you can slip in some of those parenting things that, yeah. you know, they're kind of listening, but not really listening. So it's not so in your face. Exactly. Uh, but what I learned is that I wasn't listening, mm. you know, that I really needed to be listening. I think I felt especially because he needed extra help that I was just going to give him that extra help. Mm. Right. Mm. You know, show him, tell him, but he needed to express himself. Mm. And so listening is the biggest lesson that I learned in the kitchen. Right. Wow. So many and of us like assume that we know what's going on in our kids' minds or our friends' minds or our mom's minds or our partner's minds. What are the chances that of everything possible that somebody could be thinking that you've guessed it? Yeah, I know. It's so true. It's so it's true. Like, yeah. Right. Right. Yep. Yep. Yeah, it's so true. Really, really true. Um, and so that's great. And so today you still have a really beautiful relationship with him. Um, we have a relationship that is beautiful a lot of the time. Um, he doesn't live with me anymore. He lives on his own, which is a huge accomplishment also. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we weren't always sure that that was a possibility. 
Um, we definitely deeply love each other. He knows he can count on me. We mm -hmm. are still working on communicating. We still cook together once a week. That is our happy time. Mm -hmm. We come together. These are the, the building blocks for what is our relationship. Mm -hmm. And there are lots of happy memories. And then all those skills that you learn in the kitchen, the mm -hmm. communicating, the respect, the conversation, you get to take them with you. Mm -hmm. Like we mm -hmm. would go other places, you know, early on and start arguing. And we we're like, hey, remember those good feelings we had in the kitchen? Remember mm -hmm. how we talk when we're in the kitchen? Let's mm -hmm. do that here too. Let's keep mm -hmm. that going. So that was really special too. Right. Wow. Um, well, and you know what is, which is what I love is that you're talking about, you know, so let's, with younger kids too, like you can draw them into the, the whole kitchen space with the gadgets that are there too, right? I mean, we got cool can openers here. We got mixers. We've got funky, you know, I don't know what else do we have, um, you know, Frying, baking, shredding, shredding is fun. Um, all of that stuff, right? So draw them in with the fun activity and take it from there, right? Is that your best suggestion to, to start? Well, I mean, every kid is different. And you asked me, you said, you know, maybe my sons won't be interested in cooking. How do I get them in the kitchen? Yeah, so, okay, well, that was my next question, yeah. Okay, yeah, and I've seen, you know, I used to do my classes in person before the pandemic, and now, yeah. you know, it's all virtual. And I've had moms have trouble getting their teens down. So sometimes it's a mandate. They work it in as part of the chore list. You know, this mm -hmm. is, you know, cooking is on your chore list. I told you I straight up paid my son. I paid him $10 an hour to work for me and now we were cooking. So, and I can tell you that the $10 was well worth it when you compare it to $150 an hour for therapy. Right. I mean, not that therapy isn't valuable. So I'm not saying that at all. I know, I know what um, you're saying. But an incentive for a teenager, 10 bucks, you know, can be pretty powerful. So whatever you have to do, but I think again, appealing to their sense of um, autonomy and independence, like they're craving independence. I mean, kids used to get out of the house a lot younger, right? Mm -hmm. Than in like the last century, you know, at 15, they were probably going out and starting their own farm and their own family. So, you know, I think mm -hmm. that's sort of playing into why our kids are so desperately trying to break away at what feels like maybe an earlier age than the 18 or when they typically mm -hmm. leave the house. Uh, but if you give them the option, and I wanted to mention that too, because picky eaters miraculously become less picky when they have a say in the menu, when mm -hmm. they're actually involved in the preparation, it's like a miracle. I've had all kinds of kids come into my class and adults and they'll walk in and like whatever the recipe is for the day that was, you know, for the cooking class, they'll say, oh, I don't eat peanut butter. I'm like, oh, I used to freak out. I'd be like, oh my God, but our recipe includes peanut butter. What are you going to do? Or I don't eat coconut. And oh my, like, what am I going to do? And then I found that when they actually take part in creating the food, they'll eat it. They'll try it. They'll, and it, you know, my recipes are delicious too. So, yeah. you know, yeah. right. So, it, you know, when you make it delicious, it changes people's minds. A lot of associations mm -hmm. with food have to do with, you know, experiences where the food didn't taste so good too. Yeah. That's, I can, I can validate that statement a hundred percent because, uh, you know, half of my issue is like, well, what's in it? <laughs> what did you sneak in there? Right. But when you're part of the process and you know, I, I, it's like, I mean, I obviously think my food is safe, right. Cause I know yeah. exactly how I made it, what went into it. And so I have no problem with my food. Yeah. So you're absolutely right. And I think what's really great about this too, is that there is this confidence that, you will instill in your kids too, because this is a basic, a very basic and very important life skill that you need to have to know that you can, you know, take care of yourself in, in the most, you know, important way. One of the most important ways, right. Um, to cook is, is important. I mean, that, what can I say? I've said it already like five times. It's so important. <laughs> right, but I'm going to tell you why it's so important. Okay, good. Right. So it's empowering. Mm -hmm. 
to know that you can take care of yourself at the most basic level. I think that's why a lot of moms who hate cooking or can't cook feel like a little helpless, mm. right? And it's really not that hard. It's like everything, it just takes practice. Yeah. Right. I always say like, how many hours do you think Gordon Ramsay spends in the kitchen? Yeah. <laughs> like a hundred hours a week. Yeah. Oh, if, yeah. Or more. If not more. Yeah. 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 So, that's true. It's empowering when you know how to cook and take care of yourself. It's empowering for the kids. It builds self-confidence. I mean, I can't even tell you, kids walk into my kitchen and they, they're they afraid. And I can almost see that maybe somebody's told them they're not good at things or whatever. They're really afraid. And after one hour, just slicing apples they're like oh my god i did it so you forget that some of the smallest things mm-hmm. are big for a kid like mm-hmm. learning to tie their shoes or whatever it is mm-hmm. and it, their self-confidence their self-esteem just soars mm-hmm. you know and then of course the creative aspect of it allows them to express themselves and it's just beautiful yeah. You know, it's so interesting. Uh, over the last little while, I've seen a couple of kids. One one is a, a friend's older son and another is a client's son. Uh, and he was a really troubled kid, really struggled. They they had a very you know difficult relationship, which is why I was in the picture. Um, and I and I just saw that he is now going to culinary school. Uh, and same with the other child, right? So, so maybe this is also one of those things that might, we may overlook um, that could actually really, like you say, you know, help our kids and also give them, like, give them confidence that, they, that there is potential in life for them too, right? Because sometimes, like I have a child that has learning disabilities, ADHD, um, he has OCD, Kitchen, the kitchen would be really tough for him. I know it would be tough for him. You know, opening and closing the fridge would be hard for him. Um, and, uh, and so, you know, but still knowing that, you know, if you can conquer this, that this is, this is life skills, but could even be more than that. That's exciting too. So a lot of these modern day um, conditions, ADD or um, OCD or whatever, anxiety, depression are big ones, obesity, diabetes. A lot of these start with what we're putting in our bodies. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah. Right. So you solve a lot of problems if you can encourage them to eat better foods. And for my son, he was eating a lot of junk, um, Mm -hmm. a lot of fast food that you know, really doesn't have much vegetables or vitamins or minerals that our bodies crave and need. Mm -hmm. But we started making burritos and tacos and pizza and, you know, things that he could relate to. We didn't start out like making salads and, you know, just like, okay, you're going to be vegetarian now or anything like that. But we took some healthy pasture raised, lean ground meat, added fresh spices, which are so healing to the mm-hmm. body, cumin, coriander, chili powder. These aren't just flavors. These actually are anti-inflammatory or high in antioxidants that keep our cells all healthy. Mm-hmm. And when you go back and you think about the human body and the way it functions, when it's missing those minerals and those nutrients, it doesn't function properly. So if you can get the kids in the kitchen and show them how to feed themselves and to eat better, And, you know, sometimes you have to sneak stuff in. Mm -hmm. Like I had one girl who came in, we made acai bowls, which is also an excellent way. It's like a smoothie bowl with all kinds of fruits and shredded Mm -hmm. nuts and coconut and things that are all good for you on top. She said to me, you know, my mom sleep um, slips like leafy greens into the smoothie bowl and she thinks I don't know. And I said, and now that, um, you're cooking for yourself, you can slip them in there. Right. She looked at me like, you know, (laughs) mouth open wide. Like, wow, I could even, you know, get those healthy things in there and, you know, feel that sense of I'm doing it for myself rather than, you know, how it was sort of a, you know, contentious thing when she thought her mother was sneaking it in. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's great. It is a little sneaky, but yeah, when you're choosing to do it for yourself, that's a whole different vibe, isn't it? It's totally it's different. A whole different vibe. So when you get them in the kitchen, they can, 
eat more nourishing foods. And then it grow it, it builds. Yeah. You know, once well, you start eating that way, your body learns this is the way we eat. And yeah. once you eat junk and you keep eating junk, your body says, okay, this is the way we eat. Mm -hmm. So yeah. like you said, when you have your kids for only a certain period of time, make the most, make the most of that. And as a mom of, uh, as, of two teens myself, and you've been through this already, you know, you realize how short it is. I mean, my 13 year olds, you know, he really is a teenager. He really wants to push away. He wants to be independent, wants to do things on his own terms. And I think, wow, geez, I didn't think it was only going to be 13 years, but you know, I, I respect that that's part of the process and all of that too. But um, this is really, this is really exciting to, to, to hear you talk like this and to have some hope. I think for, for a lot of parents out there, if you just don't know what to do, maybe start here. I can think of a few of my clients that I really want to, um, to suggest this to, because I think what you're saying just makes so much sense. And for people like me who don't love to cook, I don't have a huge repertoire of, um, meals that I make, um, and, and I just want to say, I'm putting myself down a lot. I, I'm not a bad cook. I just don't like it because I'm, by the time I'm done my day, I'm tired. I've talked all day long for the most part. I've listened all day long and I'm like, I'm just tired. So um, here's the thing though. I want to join you on Sunday nights when you have your virtual cooking classes over Zoom. And so who cares that it's not in person anymore because now me from Vancouver can watch you in, um, in North Carolina. So that is a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful thing. So can you tell us what you do on these Zoom cooking classes? Because I am so excited. Yeah, so I pick a meal. So that's one thing you don't have to do anymore. Figure out what's for dinner. Good. Right? Um, and there's a huge advantage to you making it yourself. One, you get to keep all the leftovers. When people would come to my home and do cooking classes with me, you know, I would have eight or 10 people here. There was really just enough for everybody to have their meal. You know, and maybe- well, That's a, little... a lot, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So when you cook, you know, our recipes are usually for four. You can usually double or triple them. The fact that they're on Sunday nights gives you that meal prep opportunity before your it. busy week, right? Yeah. So I don't cook every night of the week, right? I don't want to have to figure out what's for dinner every night of the week. I don't want to be in the kitchen. I, okay, so don't get me wrong. I love to cook. And a lot yeah. of it's because of the connection I feel. People would come to my house and they were like, it's always so much nicer to have dinner at your house than everywhere else. And I could never figure it out. I was like, I don't, you know, you're all good cooks too. But I think it was the love and the energy that I put into the food that I was so welcoming and I wanted to connect with people. And the food was literally my way of saying, I care about you. Yeah. Remember that. So um, anyway, on Sunday nights, um, we meal prep if you want. Some of my people are cooking for fewer people, so that's obviously not um, you know, important to them. And then there's nothing I love more than when I open the refrigerator or the freezer at the end of a busy day and there's dinner. Yeah. Then I just need to heat it up. I can pull it out of the freezer. I might have, like I have a bag of salsa verde um, taco meat. Right. That it's good for two or three nights and lunches that I can pull out of the freezer and I'm all set. So when I have a busy week, I can feel good about it. So uh, I can feel good about feeding my family and knowing that I don't have to work so hard. So there's that. Okay. Well, I love that. So where do we go to find these cooking, the, the, the link, all of your stuff? Where do we go? Where do we go? Yeah. Tell me because I'm signing up right now. <laughs> yeah, good. Yes, good. I'm so glad. Come join me. Um, connectingkitchen.com is my website. Uh, if you look under classes, I have a list of virtual classes. I usually have two or three at a time. And then, you know, I'm constantly redoing them. As a matter of fact, I thought when I started doing virtual classes that I would be teaching the same class over and over again, or maybe three different classes throughout the year. But what actually happened is the same moms the same people are joining me every week and they want something new right <laughs> i want something new and i love that they're joining me 
So for the last nine months, I've basically been coming up with different recipes every week. So you know, there's usually two or three at a time and then, you know, some I repeat or whatever, but they're all fun and exciting. Um, I had mentioned that I've traveled all over the world. So I've kind of pulled the healthiest habits from a lot of different countries, a lot of different flavors. Um, my next cooking class, so I'm not sure when this is gonna air exactly, but right now we're into spring holidays, Easter is coming up. My next cooking class is April 11th. We're going to Havana in yeah. Cuba because we can't travel internationally or much at all during the pandemic. So I'm taking people around the world on our plates. Wow. We're making a mojo chicken, which is um, made with orange juice, lime juice, garlic, uh, with black beans and rice on the side. And it's just delicious. It's easy. It's delicious. Sounds amazing. Yeah, so you can find the links for those. I have a rainbow bowl coming up, which is a special recipe of mine with all foods that are good for your brain. Okay, I love it. That's great. Yeah, that's a salmon bowl over Brussels sprouts, sweet potatoes. But if you don't like some of those things, don't worry, you might change your mind or you can uh, substitute or leave them out. So there's that. Oh, that's so great. That's so great. I love that. It's... Uh... It's something I, I I mean it when I say it. I'm going to I'm going to show up and uh, and watch you cook and try and do it myself. I think that's going to be really great. I think my my family would like a different meal or two. So uh, so this is great, and I will invite the boys as well. Yes. So let's see how this all works. This is going to be like a real experiment. I'm putting myself on the line right now on the spot by saying it. Um, so, so this is great. So I'm going to look forward to seeing you more. And I, uh, I just want to thank you so much for, you know, for sharing your story and your wisdom and giving us a new way to connect. And what I love about it is it's everything that I already talk about. You know, you've got to really listen to your kids. You've got to solicit ideas and thoughts. And, and this is such a great way to practice that connection is everything. And when you have those deep connections with your kids, those deep bonds, you know, you are their emotional safe place, their safe haven not only does it ensure their long-term well-being, it does yours as well. I can't stress that enough. So I love what you're doing and I love that you're giving us some ideas on how to do this. So thank you so much. Oh, well, thank you so much for having me. I so love what you do. I've enjoyed our conversation. I hope I've changed your mindset just a touch. Well, I was, I was very open to it. So yes. And, uh, and, and, and like I said, you know what, we, um, we have, uh, we have a little bit of everything in our house. So uh, I'm looking forward to a little bit, some, a little bit more different and more variety. So this is great. Thanks yeah. so much, Meryl Hunt of Connecting Kitchen. We, I'm just beyond excited uh, to talk to you and uh, I will see you on Zoom. <laughs> yes. I'll see you in the kitchen. <laughs> Bye, Robin. Thank you for listening to this edition of my podcast, Parenting Our Future. I'm parent coach Robin McMahon. And if you're enjoying this podcast, please share it with someone who you think might also need to hear this message. And don't forget to subscribe. And if you like my work, I'd be grateful if you gave me a five-star rating. For those of you who like my content and want more, visit me at yellingcurebook.com to get your copy of my book and to find other resources to help you. Until next time, I am wishing you and your family peace and connection.